60 years ago, I walked from Clearfield to St. Mary's, thence to Smithport, 60 miles, most of the way through glorious white pine and hemlock forests. Now these forests are gone. Staying here in one of my favorite cabins in the woods of Pennsylvania, I started to think about the history of the forest that surrounds this place. In 1902, Petersburg, Pennsylvania carpenter Elmer Croyle built this cottage on the edge of the forested area now known as Roth Rock. This entire area had been virtually stripped bare of trees to provide wood to make charcoal for the iron furnaces located at Greenwood. When two of the Greenwood furnaces closed a year later in 1903, the Forestry Commissioner, Dr. Joseph Trimble Rothrock, was instrumental in helping the Commonwealth purchase 35,000 acres of that company's land. Rothrock was born in McVeightown, Mifflin County in 1839. He was often ill as a child, so he used hiking in the mountains and the, and the forests as exercise to combat his illness. While hiking through these trails as a child, he developed a love of the outdoors. He eventually went off to Harvard and graduated in 1862 with a degree in botany. The following year, he enlisted in the Union Army and was severely wounded in the Battle of Fredericksburg. Looks like I possibly be in for some storm coming. In September of 1862, Rothrock was a private with the 131st Pennsylvania Volunteers when they were attached to the Army of the Fifth Corps in Antietam, where my three times great grandfather fought with the 44th PA Volunteers in the infamous cornfields. Rothrock's 131st Regiment was only lightly engaged in Antietam, but this would change three months later in December when Rothrock was injured at the Battle of Fredericksburg. By 1864, Rothrock would be commissioned as a captain with the 20th Regiment Pennsylvania Volunteers. Rothrock famously called the western and northern parts of Pennsylvania the Pennsylvania Desert due to the barren wastelands caused by the logging operations at that time. He cited the arrival of the Swedish in the 1630s as beginning the clearing process of removing trees to build farms. Rothrock was concerned that the forest would never regrow if they were not managed properly. In 1895, Pennsylvania created a new division of agriculture. That included a division of forestry. Rothbrock was appointed as commissioner of forestry. In 1897, legislation was passed that allowed Pennsylvania to purchase these lands as actual forest reserves. Two of Rothrock's major accomplishments was his land acquisition program and his establishment of a state academy for forestry service. So lands acquired by the state in the early 20th century were actually separated into three different state forests, Logan, Penn, and Rothrock. In 1953, Logan and Penn were distributed to the newly created Bald Eagle State Forest and the remaining land was absorbed in the Rothrock State Forest. Thanks to men like Joseph Rothrock, Jacob Noldy, Maurice Goddard and Gifford Pinchot, the second growth forest of Pennsylvania, have recovered from the desolation of the lumber era. The Rothrock State Forest is a great example of this recovery and the work of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources.